let's talk to Herschel again, see if he has anything new to say. Herschel scouted them. Back again, eh? He said, slapping James on the shoulder. Now I know that something around here has you mighty interested, because I know what I saw with my own two eyes. You've been around here before looking for something out behind the house here. What you looking for, boy? I insist I have not been looking for anything around here other than an answer to who this person is that you think I look like, James said, numb that he had actually gotten the phrase out of his mouth. Running a hand across his pale, bald pate, uh, <clears throat> the man made an inter indeterminate sound. I don't know, don't care, now just leave me be, boy. Okay, I don't know where I got boy. Not wanting to start an argument with the stranger, James allowed for them to be escorted out of the door. <coughs> now, who do we know that looks like James? That's right. <coughs> he has a twin, Lyle. But first, let's go talk to Max. Let's see what he has to say about this. Maybe he's seen something. He lives nearby, right? The door was unlocked. James entered the small house and looked around. Judging by the simplicity of things which decorated the interior, he guessed the house belonged to Max Fieber. This is odd, he said, noticing a few items which seemed a bit more expensive than a farmer might be expected to own. Alerted by the incongruity, something told him to investigate the farmer's belongings further. Oh, we found a shovel and a burial cloth. Hmm. Huh. Let's take this with us. Do we have room? Yes. We uh we don't need a shovel. We have two of them. Actually, let's let's give them no, oh, let's give him two shovels, and we'll take one. <clears throat> Fair trade, right? <clears throat> well, let's see if Max, maybe he's in the barn. The barn door was locked. Sneaking around to the other side, James spied a flagstone boulder resting against the outside of the back wall. With Gorath's help, he pushed the stone to the side, revealing some broken planks in a hole, just large enough for him to slip through. <clears throat> Stealing into the murky darkness, he inched along blindly until his foot bumped into something hard. Crouching down with a smile, he was able to make out the shape of a wooden chest and was relieved to find it unlocked. Oh, well, glazer seals. I don't think we need any more than the one we have. So let's just leave that be. Where is Max? Maybe he's out in his field. Oh. James spotted a man in a field. Bent over, he appeared to be a farmer of some stripe, though his work seemed to become more industrious as he drew closer to him. Undoubtedly, he had seen them as well. Would you happen to know who lives in that house nearby? I should. I lived half my life in it. Name is Max Feebler. Feeber. Not Feebler. Are you certain? Are you funny in the head, lad? Of course I'm certain. How could I not be? Do you often make it a habit of to go digging in graveyards? What do you mean? I mean, the three of us found a burial cloth, and we think you have something. I need to stop clicking before I'm ready. You broke into my house? I'll tell the constable for this. If he were still living in town, I might feel threatened. But I rather imagine you've already managed to scare him off. Now talk, or I'm going to have a cozy little chat with a friend of mine named Nivik, Prince Arutha's tax collector. Nice fellow. I think the two of you will get along marvelously. One grave. One grave only I dug up. I don't remember the fellow's name now, but he used to own the Six Toe Tavern before Nia took over the shop. I thought that maybe I could scare her into moving out and selling to me, but she's too darn stubborn. What did you do with the corpse? Uh, no corpse about him. He was down to his skeleton. I tried to rebury him, but I never found one of his hands. It's bound to be near the graveyard. I think I may have dropped it when I was near old Herschel's house. 
What else? That's it. That's all I know. Honest. Dug him up and then I reburied him. We'll need to find that hand and bury it. No thanks to you. Goodbye, sir. And I would advise that you stay away from the tavern from now on. I doubt you will be warmly greeted. I have an itch on my ear and I'm keep I'm trying not to scratch my microphone. Alright. Now, we've already talked to Herschel, and he's seen somebody hanging around his backyard that looked just like James. And we've already determined that James looks very similar to Lyle. Now, Lyle is back in Dark Moon, so let's go talk to him. Maybe that was him. Maybe he found the hand. Yeah, 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 you need rest. You always need rest. Uh, just quickly run back. There's Malik's Cross. Dark Moor should be up here, right here. There we go. Uh, you in there, we wish to be able to speak with you, blah, 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 blah. <coughs> Randers Keith! Hello, Senor James, what brings you back here? We came back to check on where you sold that skeletal hand that you found near Sethanon. Did you say you sold it to someone named Glover and Lighten? That I did. I just wanted to check again before I went and made a fool of myself. Thanks again, Lyle. Now, either the game glitched out, or I forgot that he talked about it earlier. I'll have to check the previous video. But either way, he basically uh, says he sold it to someone in uh, Lyle. Lyle. Lighten. His name's Lyle, not Lighten. <coughs> so, back to there we go. I don't know, like I said, if the game glitched out and just if he if it glitched out or if he mentions it earlier. He might have mentioned it earlier actually. I'm not exactly sure. Okay, there's the temple of uh this Krama, I think. Either way, we know uh, uh he sold it to someone in Light Sin called Glover. Yeah, 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 here. Take your money. I don't care. Now, where could he live? Let's go to Tavern and see if anybody in there might know about him. Oh, it's too early. Alright, we talked to that guy. Yeah, ready? These are finger people. Let's talk to this guy. Men were laughing. That sounds like quite a funny story, James said. Would you care to repeat it? The man looked about nervously. Uh, no, I... Please, said James with a warm smile as he could must... With a... as warm a smile as he could muster. Understanding why the man might be nervous. Well... Okay, I was just telling the fellas about an old Glover. Paid 300 sovereigns for a dead man, dead man's hand. Thought it was a glory hand or something like that. Figured he could sell it for big money, I guess. James thanked the man for his information and time. In his time. So, Glover's around here somewhere. Let's go down here. The man at the door flew into a rage. You, he shouted, pointing at James. That hand you sold me was totally worthless. It wasn't a glory hand at all. James took a step back. I'm afraid you have mistaken me for someone else. I really have no idea what you are talking about. But did you say something about a hand? We'll buy it back from you. 
I tossed that worthless thing into the dried-up well at Lighton. 150 sovereigns, that's how much I paid for it. You telling me you'll give me my bunny back if I retrieve it for you? Sure. James nodded. The man looked at them suspiciously, threatened to have them strung up if they weren't around when he returned, then left. Several hours later, he returned with a small burlap bag. Placing it on the table with a thud, he turned to James. Here's your hand, now give me back my gold. I didn't take your gold, so let's call this a sale, shall we? said James. Call it whatever you like. Where's my bloody money? the man bellowed. James retrieved the money from his pouch and dropped it on the table. The man scooped up, up greedily and demanded they stay until he had a chance to count it all. All right, now we have a skeletal hand. <laughs> now, let's head back to Sethanon. Well, not to Sethanon, but near Sethanon, anyways. And let's wait till morning. I need to buy some food here shortly. Whee! Alright. Now, let's go over here. Let's dig up the grave. The tip of Gora's shovel made a wooden clunk, using his hands to push away the soft, unpacked earth. He wiped perspiration away from his blah, 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 blah. He motioned for someone to bring the hand, <clears throat> bring him the hand, as he carefully pried the pine lid. That's a typo, isn't it? Oh no, pried open the pine lid of the decaying box. Then, without looking inside, he dropped the hand in and quickly closed the lid, part of it crumbling in his fingers. Rest in peace now, Jared, whispered Owen. Come on, let's fill the grave and get out of here. Now, let's go down and talk to Nia again. Actually, let's uh, just cut the video off here. And when we come back, we'll talk to Nia and see if the ghost has gone away, has left, stopped haunting her, whatever you want to call it. <laughs>